Hey guys, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. And we are going to be talking mainly about a focal length comparison today. So we're gonna be looking between different focal lengths and delve into each of these focal lengths and how they would affect your images if you were taking beauty photographs in particular. So as you guys might know already, I am primarily a beauty photographer and I have had quite a bit of experience of experimenting with different lenses, different focal lengths over the years. And I've kind of settled on a few of my favorites. And I'm really gonna talk you through some of the main portraits focal lengths today and which ones you should really consider or look at if you are getting into beauty photography. So what we're first going to do is we're going to go through each focal length and I'm going to talk about some of the benefits, what that focal length does well, what it doesn't do as well. We're then going to go into a photo comparison of all three focal lengths and I'm really going to show you what the difference is between each of them and how it can change facial features in an image. And then we're going to go into what kind of lenses or what kind of focal lengths you should look at purchasing for your lens kit if you are looking at getting into beauty photography. So as a quick disclaimer, we're mainly gonna be talking about very standard beauty portraits to start off with, but I will be making a special mention for macro and focusing distance at the end of the video. We're just gonna quickly run through that too and I'll tell you what to kind of look out for when purchasing a lens. So first off, we're gonna be talking about the 50 millimeter focal length. And admittedly, I actually no longer have a 50 millimeter prime in my kit anymore, but I do have a 24 to 70 millimeter lens. So I'm going to use the 50 millimeter focal length on that today. So the 50 millimeter focal length is generally considered a standard portrait length. It's more compressed than a 35 millimeter focal length, which means it flattens out the features a little bit more, particularly when you're photographing portraits, but it's not very compressed. Like for example, the 85 millimeter or 100 millimeter focal lengths. So essentially it's kind of an in the middle type of portrait lens and it's a very popular length for people to purchase. It's very versatile for lots of different portraits and it's actually great if you're looking at photographing more than one person and trying to fit them both in the shot for, I guess, closer up portraits and potentially when we're talking about beauty portraits, it does make a good focal length for that. However, I will say that it does create a little bit more distortion on the facial features than the other focal lengths that we're going to be talking about today. This is generally considered a negative aspect for beauty photography, as usually it's better to have a little bit more compression and flatter features for beauty. However, it does allow you to see a little bit more of the background being a little bit more of a wider focal length. So that's really something to keep in mind, depending on the types of beauty portraits that you're wanting to take. It can also be a potentially more flattering option for certain people. So for example, if you're photographing someone with a much more broader face, sometimes having a very compressed lens or, or focal length can really make them appear even more broader. So maybe this is where you would consider a slightly wider focal length to help sort of narrow their features down a little bit more. The next length that we're going to dive into is the 85 millimeter focal length. 85 millimeters is a beautiful mid-range portrait lens. As I said, the compression is a bit higher and it can also separate your subject a little bit more from the background. This can be especially beautiful if you're looking at shooting outside and really want that nice background blur. An 85 millimeter will also help show a little bit more of the background than the 100 millimeter. Not a huge difference uh, compared to the 50, but that's also something to take into consideration. And the final focal length that we'll focus on today is the 100 millimeter focal length. Now I'm going to straight up admit that my favorite focal length for beauty is 100 millimeters and I'm going to explain why. 100 millimeters allows you to easily isolate features on the face or parts of the face. This is definitely harder to do with a wider focal length. It also really flattens out the facial features even more, as I said before, and really gets rid of that distortion altogether. It's not without its faults though, because as I said previously, the 100 millimeter can also be a little bit unflattering for people with broader faces. So this is once again, where you would consider maybe a wider length for those types of facial features. And this is where the conversation really does focus on what kind of features are you photographing, who you're photographing, and what focal length would be the most flattering choice to use for them. This is why most of the time it's great to have several of these focal lengths in your kit. Now it's time for a photo comparison. You can see that between all the photos, the 50 millimeter has the most distortion on facial features, where the 85 and 100 millimeter have next to none. You'll also notice that Ella's nose is slightly larger in the 50 millimeter shot, whereas it's more proportionate in the 100 millimeter and 85 millimeter. So which focal length should you buy? Well, for beauty photography, I'd be more inclined to purchase a lens that did have macro listed in the title. This way you're going to be able to get even closer and have a closer minimum focusing distance for your shots. So if you can combine one of these longer focal lengths that we spoke about today and macro in the title of the lens, then personally, I think that would be a great option for a beauty lens. So it is an important point to consider with having macro in the title of the lens, but if you're unable to source a macro lens, be aware that you may have to crop 
skin. Personally for me, I love anywhere from 85 millimeters for beauty right up until about 180 millimeters, but especially anywhere between 85 to 135. So as I said, if you can find a focal length between those numbers along with macro listed in the title, I think that could be a perfect choice for a beauty lens. What I've also found to be helpful if you've already got maybe one of these focal lengths or you want to invest in a lens, but maybe it's cheaper to not necessarily get a prime lens, for example, is to actually have a zoom lens. I have a 24 to 70 millimeter f2.8 L lens from Canon. And this has also been really versatile and really great for photographing more than one model on set because it allows me to zoom out to a slightly wider length. It's also great if you have a small space that you're working in, having that little bit of a versatility in a zoom lens when you're just starting out is a really great thing to have. As for a 50 millimeter focal length that we talked about today, I would definitely consider this if you're looking at doing a wide variety of portraits, not just beauty. Then that's definitely something I would consider having in my kit. 85 millimeter focal length would be very close to a 100 millimeter focal length for me. But to be completely honest, as I said, 100 millimeter always tends to come out on top for me. I do tend to like how compressed it is and how it does make facial features appear on camera compared to the other focal lengths, but there will be those occasions where it doesn't work as well as maybe a wider length. So it's good to have a second option in your kit for that. All right, guys, well, I hope you really enjoyed this video today on some focal length comparisons for beauty photography. And let me know down in the comment section below what your favorite focal length is for beauty photography, because everyone's different. Everyone takes different portraits and everyone's got different ideas on the subject. So definitely feel free to let me know. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, Channel already make sure that you do because I'll be posting a lot more in future thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you in the next one bye